All right. Welcome, everybody. I am Dr. Mark D. Brinkett, the Good News Doctor, and I am so excited to have everybody on this evening. Uh, we are at the end of January 2019 and super excited to be here. Tonight's topic is going to be all about optimizing our brain health and we specialize in helping people with brain health issues and have been through it myself. So I am so excited to be able to bring you some real interesting down to earth information that's gonna help you be able to take better care of yourselves and your family and your own brain. And so without further ado, let me go ahead and get my presentation started. All right. Let's go into a small picture there. Okay, so um, before I get started, I wanted to just give a little background. I know we have a lot of new people on this afternoon or this evening that don't quite know our whole story. So I'm going to start off with just a brief uh, summary of Christy and I's journey of health and trauma. Um, we were in this head-on collision many years ago and was left disabled. I had multiple injuries. I spent a lot of time permanently in a wheelchair and was told by so many doctors that I would never recover and that I would never walk again and just deal with it and live with that. And so uh, after seven surgeries, I eventually had on my seventh surgery this computer put into my spinal cord. And this is an actual neurostim unit that was a last ditch effort to just get me out of pain and uh, not have to be on pain pills all the time. And so um, through all that journey, you know, I used to always believe when I was raised that your physical health is your number one asset in life. And if you lose that, it doesn't really matter what you have. Uh, you're not going to be able to enjoy any of it. But after losing my physical health and, and my ability to walk for a long time, um, I kind of changed my tune on that and believe that, it's your brain health that's most important because I was okay with accepting the fact that I wasn't going to walk again. Uh, and that was okay. But once I had to medicate myself and I was living in a bubble, uh, that was so much worse than, you know, being you know, crippled mentally, you know, in your own brain rather than, you know, the physical side of it. So now I believe your mental health is your most important asset of life. And, you know, it's really it's how we control everything. And, and neurologically, our nervous system runs and governs everything. So this evening, I am going to share some secrets, some tips, some things that we found that gave us our breakthroughs and that got us our health back and got me my life back and my physical abilities back and my mental, you know, sharpness and, and, and wittiness, I guess you could say back. And so I'm so thankful for all the, the teachers and the, and the instructors and the mentors I've had over the years that, you know, never gave up hope and always continue to share with me the things that were major breakthroughs, you know? And so it wasn't a matter of if I was gonna get better or when was my next breakthrough, it was just a matter of, or actually when is my next breakthrough gonna happen? That's what it was. And so, you know, in order to really fully grasp um, how healing takes place, I'm just gonna take you on a small journey of the inside of the human body and our nervous system is by far the most important system that governs and runs our body and it's all dialed right back into the brain so the brain is the cpu of our computer and it's it's guiding and dictating and directing the function of every single one of your hundred trillion cells so here's a little secret <clears throat> when you have damaged cells or or scars, or wounds, or what have you, emotional traumas from the past, all of these things create a pattern in the cell. Now, I had to come to gr grasp that my injuries were permanent, which meant that the tissue that I currently had, had issues that was not good. And so I accept that. But what I was gonna really focus on is how the body actually heals. And so just, Bear with me for one moment as we kind of go through the miracle of life and the miracle of reproducing healthy live cells. So it all starts with molecules and your innate intelligence and that nervous system is organizing molecules to become cells. Those cells then become tissue and the tissue then becomes an organ 
the organs all get together and form systems in the body to create this beautiful organism, which is you. So every one of our cells that we have here actually has a different turnover rate. And so when you can really appreciate the fact that, well, let's not worry so much about this cell. Let's make sure that we're doing everything we can in our power. So the next version of itself is cleaner, healthier, and better than the last version. So that was a huge turning point for me when I was reminded of this fact and then started really putting all my energy and effort and focus into doing what it took to make sure that those next version of those cells are better than the last. Now we'll do another webinar that goes into a lot more detail about that. Your eyeballs only take two days to replace themselves. Your gums take two weeks. Your throat takes two months. Your skeleton takes almost a year, 11, weeks, 11 months, three weeks, three days. So whatever you're trying to do, within a new year, you're going to have multiple new versions of parts of you <laughs> and definitely a whole new version of the actual skeletal you. And so today we're going to focus on all the different things that we can do to help our brain be as healthy as we possibly can. So are you ready to go and are you ready to stimulate your brain? I certainly hope so. All right. So... We're gonna do four different topics tonight in learning how we optimize brain function. The first one is gonna be talking about what's homeostasis neurological? And how do we determine really what's going on neurologically in our brain? There's a lot of things we do to look at the brain. We can do an X-ray, an MRI, a CAT scan, a, a functional MRI, a, a spec scan. And those are all great and dandy and give us a bunch of information, but none of them are telling us what we're doing neurologically. So it's the QEEG, which is a quantitative insect electroencephalograph that's gonna do that. And we're gonna go into more detail about that. The second is a product that we find that absolutely optimizes brain function, unlike anything I've ever come across in my life. And this is changing healthcare as we know it. And this is called VoxLife HPT technology, which stands for Human Performance Technology. Then we're gonna talk about the chemistry in your brain and how important it is to maintain and regulate healthy chemistry in your brain. And finally, we're gonna talk about the importance of sleep and how and what your brain is doing while you're sleeping. So with that, we're gonna first start off with what homeostasis means. Now homeostasis is basically saying that, you know, I'm in a neutral zone neurologically and I have a lot of reserves. So I can get excited or I can calm down whatever direction I need to go. Um, I can do that with reserve when we're balanced and we're in what's called homeostasis. Now, your brainstem's sole function is to always keep your brain in homeostasis to the best of our ability. But there's lots of things that happen uh, trauma-wise, physical, emotional, chemical, all these things create issues with uh, dysregulating the normal functions of the neurological components of our brain. So we do what's called a QEG, which is absolutely the gold standard worldwide for interpreting neurological functioning of the brain. So we're recording 19 channels at the same time. <clears throat> and with that, we can actually build a 3D image of your brain's neurology. Now, I've been doing this for multiple years, and I've never... Uh, Every time I ever see the newer technology that comes out and the newer software that comes out, I'm just so blown away because, you know, it's hard to unsee it once you've seen it. So what we're looking at here is a 3D image of the, of the neurology of your brain. And this is the cortex. This is the gray matter, the part that your conscious mind actually controls. Now, in this case, this person had two separate head traumas uh, that we can see in the red. This is an area of impact. Um, and so... I'm going to, oops, let me back up. Sorry about that. So we can see in three planes here, sagittal, coronal, and axial view of all the tissue in the brain. Now, everything here is supposed to be green. The red are areas that are too high and the blues are areas that are too low. So now we can see what happens to the neurology of our brain as we start training and introducing different things. So this is the, the Vox technology that we spoke of, and you can see how almost immediately it took about 10 seconds to calm down those hot spots. But now what's really cool is we can literally peel away that gray matter in the brain and pull up these networks in the brain. Now the purple dots there that you see are forming what we call the pain network. Now when we see red and yellow lines, this means that there's so much information bombarding those nerves that it's confusing and it's hard and you're making poor decisions and you're being overwhelmed by the pain in this case because it's a pain network. 
And so then we see we either train doing neuroplasticity or we have different products or we have different technologies, like in this case, this Vox technology that literally reboots that network. And we see green means homeostasis, which means you have a ton of reserve in that network uh, as things uh, reveal themselves. So we look for in that brain mapping what's called neurological dysregulation, and that's any reds or blues or different colors other than green. Now, a lot of things cause this. You could be born with certain abnormalities in your brain. You could have any drugs or medications that you've taken have side effects, and a lot of them do affect functioning of the brain. Um, toxic exposure to things. I mean, people think, ah, oh, we're just so easy to just skate through life and be using different products that are full of chemicals and things. But, you know, I don't know if you've been around or not, but cancer is on the rise and, and childhood cancer is even worse. And it's because our environment is so riddled with toxins that are right in front of us. And so getting aware of those things and what, what things we should and shouldn't have in the household are going to dramatically improve the quality of your brain function. Uh, poor nutrition, you know, it's like every morning when I have my handful of supplements, I'm, I'm looking out the window at God's beautiful earth and I'm saying thank you so much for the wisdom of giving me the nutrients and minerals and vitamins that my body needs to build every one of my healthy cells today. And thank you for giving it to me all at one dose here in the morning so that I know that I'm covered and I'm going to be thriving today, you know, with the functioning of all my cells because I'm choosing to make sure that I supply all the right nutrients. Now, for the rest of the day, I'm going to make really good choices and eat clean, but I'm not so dependent on all my nutrients, especially my brain nutrients, because I have to get them from liable sources that that are credible, that have good quality control, and that I know what I'm actually getting. So that's so huge. Uh, chiropractic, you know, whenever there's interference in your spine or nervous system, it's going to affect you know, the functioning of your brain and, and the way that your brain communicates to the body. And of course, trauma. So many people have had traumas. And when I ask patients, hey, have you ever had a head trauma? And they're like, no, I don't think so. You know, it's like because if you fall and they get up and you're thinking, I'm okay, and I shake it off, you don't think there was a trauma. But, you know, it doesn't take much to cause a lot of problems you know, when it comes to a force into the brain. And then of course, stress, everybody has stress, but how well do you manage that stress? You have physical stress and emotional stress, and of course, the chemical stresses. So all of these things are factors in how well your brain is regulated and stays regulated. Now, an interesting fact about the brain, the nerves in the brain are the same actual cells that you were born with, and they're the same cells you die with. Every other body cell has a turnover rate, like we mentioned, except for the central nervous system. So for many years, we thought any damage or trauma to the brain was permanent. Sorry about your luck. Now we realize that that is so not true, that neuroplasticity is something that we can stimulate the brain and it actually grows new brain tissue on top of old tissue that's already functioning, but maybe functioning a little slow. So now this is a game changer. Now this is one of the, the main reasons why I'm able to be neurologically functioning outside my wheelchair so well because I did many, many hours, hundreds of hours of training to grow new tissue into my brain. And then of course we brought a bunch of other products and all these other things that we did had that next breakthrough and the next and the next, but we have to start neurologically. And so we start with the brain. Now, the neurological approach to neurofeedback, this isn't new. They've been doing neurofeedback for over 40 years. We're just getting so much more sophisticated in listening and being able to target just that little weak area of tissue and only grow tissue there when I'm training. That is so amazing and so new. It always used to just be surface area stuff. Now we can do multiple point training and really target the weakest areas. And we do very aggressive work in multiple hours a day with our patients uh, in the comfort of their own home, and they're able to get maybe two years of neurofeedback in in a single month. And so we specialize in a lot of brain and trauma patients, and we help get them out of their wheelchairs and get them their life back. And this is the route to where we start. We have to understand where they're at, how much trauma happened, and what's even possible. There's parts of the brain map to tell us, you know, what you're capable of doing. And in some cases, it's, and that's unfortunately, but it's just too late, and we can't do it. 
So it's a very sophisticated, for, sophisticated form of biofeedback that trains to normalize brain waves and give you more strength in those areas and flexibility to adapt around the crazy lives that we all tend to you know, result in. Um, and so the results of neurofeedback are permanent. When we can stimulate the brain and grow tissue in those areas, that new tissue there is going to stay with you for the rest of your life, unless, of course, you have another trauma. So think of neurofeedback kind of like going to the gym for your brain. It's, it's, it's muscle lifting, okay? You're exercising the muscle in your brain and allowing it to strengthen the brainwave patterns so that you have more control of your emotions, your moods, your sleep. Uh, your energy, all of these things are affected when the brain's misbehaving. Uh, so the more you practice activating those specific pathways, the more they light up, and then the more tissue you grow and then the more strength you have in these areas. So another really great aspect of uh, neurofeedback training is we're really looking at what's called the arousal state. And so in the arousal spectrum, we can see how healthy your brain is. Are you in an idle state? It, you know, we should be at idle, which is alpha brain waves, when we're not doing anything, when we're meditating or just kind of on autopilot, getting dressed, making something to eat, not actually having to talk to anybody. We're in that idle state. Then when I need to engage and have a conversation with somebody or balance a checkbook or um, just be social, that's all beta waves. And so we have to arouse ourselves to communicate and, and, and think okay and so we spend most of our day being social talking to people and a little bit overrised in our beta and then when it's time to lay down and relax and go to bed we want to get into that theta and then delta is what we're going to be thriving in when we're sleeping so we have this spectrum in which we live now there's a normal zone of a little bit aroused and a little bit slowed down that we live our whole day in and so what happens is is some people for whatever reason that's unfortunate, traumatic, or, or emotional, or you know, whatever it is, bounce way outside that normal healthy zone and become over-arise, and that's a fast processing person, and that's what you call anxiety, okay? Because you can't break that, that state of arousal that they're in. Now the other side of the spectrum, when we go to the left side, that's a lower aroused brain, that's gonna be depression, but it's also ADD and ADHD. And I know some of you are thinking like, how can a lower, slower brain be a hyperactive kid? Well, it's slowing down like the car is sputtering, and so you're trying to hit the gas to get it to jumpstart again, you know? And so they wanna do and act out and do anything, maybe even you know, inappropriate, because they wanna get some attention. They're not feeling anything down there. So whether they get punished or rewarded, it's still attention. So, you know, that's what happens with the lower aroused brain. So unfortunately, um, the standard approach to these ends of the spectrum is chemical. And so there's a time and a place for it. I'm not saying that there's not. Um, I even had to, when I was under major anxiety and major depression in the midst of all my healing and not being able to walk and all of that. But it's a very slippery slope and you want to use it for a season only. Anything longer than a season is going to start to create all sorts of adaptive changes to that. And then it's going to be super hard to come off of it. But more importantly, a lot of times you're misdiagnosed. So if you're over aroused and they give you like anxiety medication, that brings you back down to neutral, but then it locks you there and it binds you there. Now you can't feel excited and you can't feel sad. So it's like, hey, we're going to Hawaii. You're like, oh, it's such a long flight. Oh, sorry, grandma just died, I got bad news. Oh really, well everybody's gonna die someday. It's like they don't feel any either way of the spectrum. So they'll just avoid and withdraw the longer they're medicated. Now, the other side of that spectrum is they're going to give them the Adderall and the Ritalin and the things to speed up that slow brain and to get them into neutral. And, you know, honestly, they feel better <laughs> when they're feeling in neutral, like, like they're in the neutral gear and they're not feeling all these weird sensations and so forth. But again, they get locked there and dependent on that. And they don't know what it's like to feel outside or to be able to fluctuate at will normally like we healthily should be able to do. So as we do neurofeedback training, we strengthen our ability to fluctuate these arousal states and also be able to live in that neutral zone so easily and not need medications to do that. So we've been very successful at helping, not personally, but in the field, literally millions of people get off these types of medications um, 
to help them return to a normal, healthy, balanced, thriving life. So uh, as I said before, the over-aroused brain, that's going to be anxiety, panic attacks, OCD, worried all the time, people that have a lot of pain, chronic pain, headaches, migraines, all of that stuff, and insomniacs, that's an over-aroused brain. Then we have the inhibited brain, which is like depression, irritability, they're tired, fibromyalgia, they have metabolic issues. And then, of course, our lower brain is going to be ADHD, traumatic brain injury, dementia, uh, learning disorders. You know, a lot of these things are going to be at that end of the spectrum. So the cool thing about this is when we do a brain map, we don't have to do anything subjectively. We can just do an objective brain map and tell you exactly how healthy you are in those zones and how well that works for you. So that's brain training and that's brain neurofeedback and brain mapping. And so we find the most dysregulated areas and we strengthen and train those conditions. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is one of my very favorite products and this is Vox Life's HTP product. This is human performance technology. Now, one of my patients introduced me to this because I deal with so many brain injury patients and say, you have to use this product. It helps the brain. And I thought, sure, it's a product that's embedded into socks and insoles and a patch. And I just thought, brain socks? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So inevitably, I did a test on myself put a brain map on me and then put the socks on and map myself again and literally fell out of my chair. This was the most profound thing I've ever seen that ever changed a brain map. And more importantly, it changed the parts of the brain map I've been trying to change for years and was unsuccessful. The parts of the brain map that they said you had to grow new tissue in in order to change it. And apparently I didn't grow new tissue in 10 seconds. So there was something else going on. So this here is the founder, Jay Dollywall. And he is just such a brilliant, amazing entrepreneur. Uh, he was an engineer in the data world and encrypted a lot of data for big companies and made his wealth. And he had a mother that got very sick with MS and went from healthy super mom to wheelchair bound in 18 months. And it just devastated the family. And they took her for years all over the world, anywhere that they could try to get her help. And they just kept saying, hey, sorry about your luck. So I understand that feeling because I hit so many dead ends myself as well. And so uh, he decided a decade ago that he's just going to stop working. He doesn't need money anymore. He's independently wealthy. And he's going to fix mom. He's going to find out how to do this. And so he created a product that we know is his Vox HTP. And now this is a neurostimulation product that stimulates the bottom of the feet to the proprioceptors that are directly tied to the brain stem and the somatosensory cortex in the brain. And what this does is it clears anything that's obstructing that neurologically. So it does a control alt delete on your computer in the brain and it says, hey, this program is not responding, let's reboot it. And so what we've seen clinically is just remarkable. We have uh, you know, improvements in physical quality of life, we see over 3 million people have used this product now in the last couple of years and two and a half years. And it is unbelievable. You can go to Facebook and type in Vox Life testimonies and you'll literally see 43,000 videos of people with all sorts of neurological issues that have immediate results. So quality of life, improvement, pain relief, increased energy, better performance. We're working with athletes. Uh, it, professional athletes, Olympic athletes, and, and colleges, it's just been quite amazing. And of course, enhanced brain function. So it's just a simple piece of product that's delivered three different ways, either in a comfortable, amazing, high-tech pair of socks, in a pair of insoles that can fit any types of shoes, or even in a patch that you simply just put on your arm that's waterproof and it's disposable after a day. So amazing product, they're all under $50. Uh, which is amazing and money back guarantee just so we know so I was hired by the company to do research for them and so in 2018 I performed over 2,000 brain maps with and without this tech just to vet, vet the company myself vet the product myself see is this really something that that we want to get behind and let me tell you I've been doing it for a year and a half after the first week of seeing brain maps, I knew it was something that was changing the world as we know it, and I had to have it. Um, and so in this maps, the one on the left is overstimulated, overexcited. We want to see it all gray. Any red means it's, it's uh, three devi deviations above standard. 
and then the dark blues would be below standard. So in here, we're dealing with a lot of reds, and then as soon as we put the tech on and remapped, we see everything calm down, and the patient feels it like we just turned off a light. So there's another before after with this amazing tech. So it's all about optimizing your brain and optimizing your nervous system. So let me ask you the question, which one of these do you think is easier to manage and to get what you want out of it? So many people's brains look like the image on the left. They're just all scrambled and they have trauma on top of trauma on top of insult. And so, you know, it's never too late. Well, that's not true. There are times when it can be too late. But if you're still breathing and functioning and walking and doing so many things, it's not too late for you that we can actually help reorganize that brain and doing it with a simple product like this Vox HP, HTP. HPT. And so what we saw on average of all of those maps last year was a 36% change, change in neurology. Now, why is that important? Well, here's why that's important. People do 10 hours of neurofeedback training and see 10 to 25% and they're super excited about that. This is 36% with no neurofeedback training. And so it's like doing a little neurofeedback 24-7 as long as the tech is on you. Now, granted, we can still do two years of neurofeedback with high-tech equipment, but there's a cost to that. This is something that's going to help you and your loved ones every single day. I haven't taken them off. I've worn them every single day for almost two years now. And, and, and if you saw your own brain map, you would not want to take them off either. That was the first thing I said. Well, why the heck would I ever take this off if it's doing that? That is awesome. So bottom line, 100% of the subjects tested had significant results. That's also very rare, because there's usually always some people that don't respond to that. So I've worked with Dr. Thatcher from Applied Neuroscience, who is one of the godfathers of neurofeedback, and he's gotten two Lifetime Achievement Awards for inventing QEEG and the software that everybody uses worldwide to interpret, like the stuff I just showed you. Uh, and so he's taken all that raw data that we did last year, and we're actually publishing this study uh, early this year. So real excited for that to come out and we'll be sharing that with everybody as soon as it does. So just in summary, this is a great product. It's, it's drug free. It's so non-invasive. It's non-chemical, non-electrical. There's no batteries. There's no, there's no, uh, difficulty in putting on a pair of socks. Everybody knows how to do that. Uh, we have 24 ac hour access to this tech and it's always going to help you as long as it's on. Uh, it's safe for any age, including pregnancy. It's affordable and portable for everybody and it has no side effects as we know of. So the next topic we're going to talk about now is healthy brain chemistry. So this is dealing a lot with the fuel for your brain. Now we can't just build new cells out of thin air. We have to have proteins, vitamins, and minerals. And now our brains are made up of mostly fats. So the very first thing we want to talk about is how important it is to eat good fat. Now we've been programmed to think that um, fats are bad and stay away from fat and, and you're going to get fat if you eat fat. Well, your brain is like 99.9% .9 fat, so it thrives on fat. So the fats that we love to use for our brain is going to be an avocado a day. is wonderful grass-fed butter. We try to eat a stick of that a week. Uh, super healthy for your brain. A, a tablespoon of coconut oil. Um, nuts are amazing snacks for your brain. Macadamia nuts have actually the most benefit for your brain health. And then we also like to, you know, really focus on a ketogenic diet where you're eating more vegetables and meats and fats and staying away from carbs and sugars. Now, we also believe in moderation. So um, ideally, it's best to be metabolically flexible, which means if you're in, a ket in ketosis and your body's burning fat for energy instead of sugar, uh, every now and then, maybe every three or four days, it's good to have a carb day and come out and let your body switch back and and, and realize that it can get fuel from that source too. Uh, and that way you don't put so much stress on your liver and kidneys over you know, years of trying to stay in ketosis. So being metabolically flexible is amazing. And don't be afraid to have the MCT oil, your coconut oil, uh, you know, and then the good fats in your diet. So the next thing we're gonna say is about essential oils. Now, these are oils that are from plants and bark and roots and trees, and they've been primary medicine for centuries for everybody. And in, even in the last 50 years, 
40% uh, of the world still uses essential oils as primary medicine. So the ones that are super tiny molecules that can actually get through the blood brain barrier are frankincense, sandalwood, and rosemary. Now these have amazing properties. Sandalwood's gonna fight cancer and it's gonna kick in the body's apoptosis, which looks at a cell that may be a cancer cell and say, you know what, we're just gonna kill you and get you out of here rather than trying to heal you. It also protects the dendrites to protect your memories and to protect you from um, you know, losing brain tissue. And so super important, your body thrives with frankincense and you can just type in frankincense and clinical studies on Google and you will literally see thousands of them. Sandalwood is another very relaxing one, a calming one to help you get into a deep sleep. And then rosemary is gonna be anti-inflammatory and block cortisol and other harmful uh, hormones and chemicals that are gonna cause inflammation during the night when your body's trying to heal. And so uh, these essential oils, we put in a diffuser next to our bed every single night. And at least the frankincense, for those of you that don't like all of them, uh, frankincense would be one that we would just not do without. So the next one we're gonna talk about is actual essential fatty acids. Now, they're called essential for a reason, because you need these in order to make other ones, and in order to make you know, other neurotransmitters and hormones and things. These are the building blocks. And so your EPA, your GLA, and your DHA are super important for maintaining healthy, smooth myelination in the nerves in your brain. Um, in fact, most people that suffer from depression or schizophrenia, they're deficient in DHA and EPA. And in fact, when you're pregnant, if you're not taking extra EPA, your brain's gonna shrink by the time you have your baby because your baby needs it for the development of their brain. And if you're not eating it, they're gonna take it from you one way or another. So to protect mama's brain and baby's brain, it's important that we are loading up on our essential fatty acids through the process. And then the other four main nutrients for the brain is your B6, your zinc, your selenium, and E. These are super important to synthesize the neurotransmitters that are regulating all of the communication going back and forth in your moods and your hormones and all of that. So, you know, your vitamins are super important. As I mentioned in the beginning, it's just not possible to get all the nutrients your body needs to thrive from your food. I know that's a lot of argument from a lot of people that eat organic and all that, and I commend you. You know, we have to do the right things for ourselves, and organic is a huge jump forward into avoiding certain chemicals and pesticides and things that we just don't need to expose ourselves to. But we really have to have good quality food supplements in order to guarantee the survival of our next cell and making sure that that one's healthier than the last. So the next thing that our brain really thrives on is something called a redox signaling molecule. Now this is actually the water and the fuel that's inside the cell and inside our cells, this water is used to communicate uh, information around the inside of that cell. So we all produce these redox signaling molecules naturally in our cells at a young age. And then after we get into our 20s, we slowly start to decline. And so by the time we're in our 70s, you know, our cells are dehydrated and they're not communicating well. And so we're aging faster than other people. And so this is a product that we use called a SIA that is absolutely remarkable in uh, restoring the myelin sheath in your brain. So one of the things we can see is how well that myelin sheath functions in our brain maps. And we've had several patients over the years that uh, would train, 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 and still not grasp that myelin sheath and still not get the neurological functioning of their delta waves back. And then we put them on this product, and after just a couple short months, it's all grown back. And so this is one that my family and myself have been taking for many years. Uh, it's, it's an important part of our cellular health in order to get over the things like we had to get over and then maintaining healthy. Uh, it helps maintain a healthy immune response, an inflammatory response. It improves our gut health and helps production of digestive enzymes for us and it modulates hormones. And so again, a very simple product, it's a two ounces of water twice a day uh, that is a water-like, it's a redox molecule, and it absorbs into your brain very, very quickly. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about for our brain needs is our gut health. Now, 
Um, a good friend of mine and, and one of my mentors, his name is Zach Bush. Dr. Zach Bush is a board certified, triple board certified medical doctor that specializes in gut health and endocrinology and the microbials of the gut. And he has done more research and published more things than anybody we know. Um, he's shared the stage with me at, at several conferences this last year. And I've had the fortune to get to know him very well and do some brain mapping with him and really collaborating. And he's got this amazing camera that he can hold up to your gut lining and show you how well that mucus lining looks in helping you digest your food and control immunity. And so here, top left picture is actually a normal control unit, a control study. And we're seeing all these circles connected with one another. The smaller the circles, the better when it comes to how strong your immunity is and in the functioning of your mucosal lining. And you can see once the control person took Restore, they got much tinier and tighter, okay? A little tighter barrier there. Now, he talks a lot about gluten and glyphosate. Glyphosate is the chemical in Roundup. And in 1954, they water, made it water soluble. Since then, it's been in our air everywhere on the planet, and it's been in the soil and in the water supply. They majorly messed up our digestion and our, our body's natural immune defenses. Now, um, when you have gluten, it'll make all of these circles separate, but when you add glyphosate to it, it looks like it shatters it like glass. Now, your gut lining will restore itself or replace itself every eight days. Now, if you have one antibiotic, it's gonna take you six months before you'll replace it in, in a way that's healthy. It's gonna be a leaky gut, it's gonna be shattered, it's gonna be all of that. And so it's because we just don't have enough good bacteria in our gut anymore. And an antibiotic is like a nuclear bomb that wipes out the good and the bad and all of that. And so I would much rather be symptomatic for a couple of days, get over my cold, and then have my normal healthy gut within eight days or two weeks, rather than have it destroyed for six months to a year. And sometimes when your immune's down like that and you keep getting sick, you're on another antibiotic and another one and you never get past it. And so this is an amazing product that has become a staple, and again, in our household and for every one of our patients to restore the good bacteria. A lot of people take digestive enzymes and, and, and probiotics. And in the probiotic, you're going to see a handful of strands, maybe two or three strands of acidophilus, bifidus, and, and, and the like. And that's like having a colony, like your whole community where you live has nothing but cooks and mechanics. So you got 10,000 cooks, 10,000 mechanics, and nobody else that does anything in that community. You know how dysfunctional that would be and how hard it would be for anybody to get anything done? And so our guts are the same way. For centuries, we had over 40,000 different microbacteria in our gut, and that is the immunity. That is your main brain. We talk about brain health. Your gut is a more important brain than up here because the gut in the computer is the keyboard and the mouse. All the data and all the entry into the nervous system comes in through that gut, most of it. And your brain is just the CPU that regulates the information. But having a healthy gut is imperative to having, having a healthy brain and also having a healthy immune response and overall health. Now, we take a product, we take this a couple times a day. It's also just a teaspoon of a water substance in there with the microbiome in it. Uh, we also have a nose spray that we can do a couple pups in our nose before I'm going into public, before I get into an airplane, before I go speak in front of hundreds of people. I'm gonna make sure that I'm protected. I'll put some on guard essential oil on the back of my neck and I'll put a couple sprays of Restore in my nose and now I am guarded and protected from any of the germs and the stuff that we are exposed to. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about this evening is gonna be healthy sleep. Now this is so imperative to maintaining a healthy, properly brain function. So good sleep, the number one tip, have your room dark, quiet, and no electronics. If your electronics have to be in the room, put them on airplane mode. Uh, having a constant upload back to the Wi-Fi through the house and all of that is gonna disturb your energy and disturb your peace. Now, one thing that you may not be aware of is that um, Dr. Mercola speaks a lot on the electromagnetic uh, effect on our healthy cells. And just this last year, 
the number one cause of cancer is now exposure to EMF, not uh, cigarettes, which cigarettes had taken it for a long time. And so it's the, it's the 5G Wi-Fi. It's kicking down the electrical charge on our each and every cell. So it makes that cell harder to function, especially to be a healthier one next time. And so if your router is in your master bedroom or in your bedroom, please remove it. Put it somewhere else in the house, further away from your bedroom. All of these things play such a huge role. And if you can have some sort of device like a Fitbit or a Hilo or uh, I like this Aura Ring. This is a Bluetooth ring that I keep on airplane mode all the time, but it measures the heart rate you're sleeping, how much deep sleep, REM sleep, um, the heart rate variability, energy levels, and so it can track all of that. And if you have any type of monitor that can track your sleeping, use it and then start experimenting. Take things out of the room and see how much better you sleep the next day. Add things like um, a pillow placement between your legs if you're on your side with your arm and have a whole body pillow. We have other lectures uh, on Facebook that we've done on, on just sleeping and pillow placement and all of that. So tune into that for all those information, but you're basically keeping the stress off your spine with the body pillow on your side between your arm and knees. And then if you roll to the other side, it comes with you really easy. If you're on your back, put that pillow behind your knees and that's gonna decompress your low back. The goal is to not toss and turn as much and get into the deepest REM sleep that you can. So pillow placement and good quality pillow in a mattress and a bed makes all the difference in the world. And if you are sleeping on the same mattress for more than 10 years, it's time to up re-up it and get yourself a new mattress. You're, you spend a third of your life in bed, you might as well be healing and get the best quality sleep as possible. And why is that important? Because your brain's gonna flow more blood through your brain when you're asleep than any other time of the day. Ventricles open and you're going into flush mode. Your body's gonna lay down 75% of all the new cells in a single day happen during your REM sleep. So it's so important that you're getting into that REM sleep and even that deep REM sleep, you know, for even more better healing. And so pillow placement's huge. We talked about diffusing essential oils, the frankincense and sandalwood and rosemary. These are amazing ones that we put next to the bed every single night. Close the doors in the room so that the diffuser stays within the room and you're getting all the healing benefits into your brain all night long. And then of course, one of my favorites is the Vox HPT. Now it comes in socks and insoles and patches. So for those of you that don't mind wearing socks at night, never miss a night without your Vox on. We had one, over 1,000 maps that, that you know, we did last year. We're looking at people's sleep patterns and then the other 1,000 maps, we're looking at what happens during the day. And so again, 100% of the participants had amazing better quality sleep by wearing either the socks or the patch. And so that's amazing. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I want to encourage you to pull out that Olympian inside each and every one of you. And don't be lazy when it comes to this stuff. I mean, it's like, it's your quality of life that we're talking about. And you wanna live your life wide open like myself to my very last breath and then go home. I don't want this slow decline of health ever again. I don't want health challenges that keep me from being free and playing and doing sports and enjoying things and activities with my kids and traveling. You know, I don't ever want that again. And so we are very diligent about all the things we can do to thrive and to make a healthy, happy brain for each and every one of us. And so I encourage you to uh, continue to learn as much as you can, stay proactive when it comes to brain health, because you don't want to get to the point that we say, oh my gosh, I really wish you would have come in earlier. You're already past this stage. It's too late for us to activate and, and really help you now. Don't wait till the symptoms come. Take care of your brain health now. Now, for anybody that's interested uh, as a special incentive for being on the call tonight, I wanted to offer you an amazing gift. And so if you want to call the good news doctor or email the good news doctor at gmail.com uh, sometime in the next two weeks. So I think we're looking at around February 12th uh, and say that I'm interested in getting brain mapped. We have um, a special gift for you. So you have to uh, apply for that or reply to the Gmail, uh, you know, to get that. So I'm happy to share that with you. 
Uh, thank you guys for, for coming this evening. And I want to encourage you that it's time to thrive again. So each and every one of you have a blessed evening and we will talk again next time.